Tennessee's Wild Side, broadcast for nearly two decades, was originally created through a vision of the Jackson Foundation. The foundation remains a supportive partner in the mission to educate viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure. Tennessee's Wild Side is produced in association with Rockwater TV. From cutting trees to measuring them, two scientists with a passion for these plants are on assignment from the University of Tennessee, traveling the state and sizing up various species, looking for the biggest ones. We found out about them only because they were checking out trees in Dixon County on land managed by the Jackson Foundation, which created and also funds Tennessee's wild side. When we met these two young women, we quickly discovered they know how to turn work into a fun outdoor adventure. So we are out here measuring big trees with the Tennessee Champion Tree Program. 6.5. 6.5. The Champion Tree Program is the database that Tennessee has that um, catalogs the largest trees of each specimen across the state. We are funded by the Tennessee Department of Agriculture Division of Forestry. I work for the University of Tennessee Herbert College of Agriculture. Our program fully relies on nominators, just members of the public, people who see big trees in their backyards or who see big trees in the parks, in our forests. We learned of the Champion Tree Program that's sponsored by the state of Tennessee. And uh, Ruskin, the grounds here at Ruskin Cave are very historic. Uh, these grounds are on the National Historic Registry and a lot of trees were planted here that go back to the middle 1800s. So we thought possibly they would be interested in looking at our trees and seeing if any one of them might qualify as a champion tree. Our nominators are people that they want to share those big trees with us. Every tree that we've been to this summer, everybody has been just so excited and enthusiastic to share the story of their trees and their properties with us. Today we looked at a white mulberry, Morris Alba. The white mulberry was introduced in colonial times as a source of food for silkworms in an unsuccessful attempt to establish a silk industry. A lot of people stop and pull a mulberry as their very first mulberry. And if you think about going back into the 1800s, how many people enjoyed mulberries off the very trees that are here today? The stories Mr. Jackson told us about the 1800s and the colleges and the camps that have all eaten the mulberries from that tree, it's, it's almost like you need a moment to really just sit back and take it in, you know, what he's telling you, the history of it. There's a large cave on the property and it has a large opening and that's the centerpiece of these grounds. Caves were highly valued by early people and societies uh, through the development of our country. And uh, that cave was occupied by prehistoric people. A socialist colony came here in the 1890s. They built a college here on these grounds and the college still stands today. It's quite a grand building. It's a three-story college. And it's all made out of white oak timber that they cut at their own sawmill. This is important to me because I am so passionate about connecting with people about trees. Our champion white oak is over 400 years old and it's in somebody's backyard. So thinking about all of the life that this tree has supported, not just generations of kids playing under the branches, of people in love kissing under there, of picnics and birthdays and parties, but also all of the wildlife that that tree supports. Yep, 23.5. But we take three main measurements for each champion tree. We take the circumference, how big it is, how long your arms would need to be if you were gonna hug the tree. We take the height, how tall the tree is, and we are specifically looking from the top of the tree straight down to the ground. So if the tree is in an angle, we're not looking for how long the trunk of the tree is, we're just looking for that highest point straight down to the ground. And we also take the crown spread. That's how far the limbs of the tree spread out. Uh, I always think of that uh, old Disney song, 
How high does the sycamore grow? If you cut it down, then you'll never know. So finding our biggest trees, what is the biggest tree? How big can this tree get? So the other trees we've measured in American elm and, and a sugar maple, um, which both he thinks are several hundred years old. We have a, a very large American elm tree here. Elm trees are becoming extinct. Uh, there's a blight that has taken its toll and elm trees are disappearing. Well, the elm tree here, we have actually more than one, but they're healthy. The goal is to find the biggest specimen of each species, so each species gets its own champion. It also gives us a little bit of perspective over time as we see which species are falling off the list. Which of our native species can we not find the biggest specimen of? Um, where are our species located across the state? We try to take care of those trees, and uh, uh, that's why I think the champion tree contest for the state is a wonderful idea. It creates awareness and appreciation of these old trees that have withstood so many storms, so many dry summers, so many cold winters, and they're still here. And we need to appreciate them and we really need to protect them. I care a lot about the environment as a whole and I think the more we can interact with the public and the individuals that are surrounded by these trees, the more of a chance we have to preserve them the more generations that come behind us get to experience them and get to learn about the history that they hold, that we're learning so much about. Tennessee's Wild Side has been a presentation of the Jackson Foundation in association with Rockwater TV.